Hello everyone, my name is Tim Myers and I am the Arts Communication and Hospitality Chair. And today in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, we will be preparing a black bean soup. My key ingredients for the black bean soup are black beans, red wine vinegar, ancho chili powder, cumin, Mexican oregano, garlic, onion, and I have some charred tomatoes as well. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to char the tomatoes. So you can take any style of tomato. I just have some uh, tomatoes on the vine. You could use a plum tomato. You could use grape tomatoes if you chose to. And what we're going to do is first we're going to cut an X on the bottom of the tomato. Second, we're going to take the top or the core of the tomato out. So one of the easiest ways is by all means, um, we're going to take a measuring spoon and you can, or a teaspoon. We're just going to scoop it out. If you wanted to, you could also use a paring knife and it would be the same process. Take the knife, cut around the core and pull it out. The measuring spoon or teaspoon just tends to be a little bit safer. The next step, we're going to take our tomato, turn it upside down, place a little bit of vegetable oil on top of it, a little salt and pepper, And this is going to go into a 425 degree oven for about seven to 10 minutes. Once we take the tomatoes out of the oven, you can see that they're slightly charred. The skin has shrunken down and there's a little bit of um, water or tomato juice that has seeped out into this bowl. These are all key components that we're going to use. So the first step is we're going to take the skin off the tomatoes, which just easily peels right off. And then we're going to take our knife. We're going to take the tomatoes. We're going to cut them in a quarter. Then our next step is to start the cooking process. So I have a medium sized sauce pot here today. And I'm going to take a little bit of vegetable oil. And what we'll be doing is once the pan gets hot, um, we'll be sweating our tomatoes, our onions, and our garlic. What I'm going to do for the garlic while my pan is heating up is we're going to slice the garlic. Now everything doesn't necessarily have to be chopped or cut very fine today because we're going to be pureeing these items um, a little bit later on. So we're just going to take, slice up the garlic. Nice and thin. And what this is going to do, it's going to extract the flavor of the garlic during the cooking process, allowing us to keep it in larger pieces so it doesn't burn. So now I'm gonna do the onions. Um, I have a hot pan, hot oil. My onions are gonna go into the pan and we want that nice sizzle sound. I'm also going to add my garlic. Sweat this up a little bit. And we don't want any color. We want this to um, start to become a little translucent. Then we're gonna add my tomatoes. My spices. A little ancho chili powder. A little Mexican oregano. And Mexican oregano is different than traditional Italian or Creek oregano as it is um, a little bit more of a citrus and grassy note. And Italian or traditional Greek oregano has more of a mint um, smell to it as well and, and mint taste. So also, they are interchangeable slightly, um, but you will notice a difference in taste. So my recommendation is um, to try to purchase Mexican oregano if you can, um, which is pretty readily available at a lot of grocery stores. <laughs> a little bit of cumin. So now, we're going to cook a lot of the moisture out of the um, tomatoes. So what we're going to do next, so we'll take a little bit of stock. Okay. 
So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our little, our blender, and um, we are going to puree the onions and the garlic and the tomatoes. So what this does is it allows the moisture from the tomatoes to release and then also evaporate some of that excess liquid as well. So what we're doing is, is we remove the liquid from the tomatoes or the water. We're concentrating the flavors of the onion and the garlic and our spices that we have placed into the pan. Now we're going to cook that down for a couple minutes. Two, three minutes is fine. And you're gonna see as this starts to um, cook, being careful to stir it occasionally, um, we don't want it to burn, because what will happen is we have a little bit more surface area in here. And typically the more surface area you have when we're reducing something, the quicker things are going to burn. So you will wanna keep an eye on it to ensure that as it's evaporating and caramelizing, it's not burning. So you can see, as this is starting to evaporate, it's also getting thicker. So and that's our goal and that's our outcome. Kind of like a thick paste. At this point, we're going to add our beans. A little bit of red wine vinegar, help a little build some acid with it develop that flavor. And then our chicken stock. So I like to use chicken stock. By all means, if you wanted this to be vegetarian, a veg vegetable stock is perfectly fine. Um, there's a little bit more fat in chicken stock um, to give it a little bit more depth of flavor. But I've made this several times with vegetable stock and um, it turns out just as good. It's all about personal preference. At this point, we'll simmer the soup for 15 to 20 minutes. And once the soup has come to that simmer for that time, then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna puree the soup um, to thicken it up, which we'll utilize the starch from uh, the beans to be our natural thickening agent within the soup. So the soup has finished simmering. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take our immersion blender. And if you don't have an immersion blender at home, you can use a blender. Um, just being very careful because it's a hot liquid, you'll put small amounts into your blender and, and process it or puree it. So what we're going to do is put the blender in. So after we've pureed it, we're gonna put it back on the stove for about another 10 to 15 minutes. And what's gonna happen is as we pureed this, the starches are going to release from the beans and it will naturally start to thicken. And also too, this soup um, will taste great today, but also the more we leave it sit, the more those flavors are going to infuse. So there will be a difference in, in taste um, today compared to tomorrow, for example, when everything has truly had had time to marry. So our soup is completed simmering and we have tightened up and thickened up naturally due to the starch from the beans. So now we're going to adjust our seasonings. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, I'm gonna taste it, make sure. Nice, it's got a little bit of heat, a little bit of acid note. So now we're gonna ladle our soup into our bowl. And now we're going to garnish. So now we're going to garnish with a little fresh cilantro. Little chihuahua cheese. and perhaps a squeeze of fresh lime.
So our black bean soup um, is complete. It has a little bit of heat um, due to the spice from the chili powder. It has a nice velvety mouthfeel um, due to the softness of the beans and the pureedness of it. Slightly thick from the starch and we'll finish with a nice citrus note thanks to that squeeze of fresh lime. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.